Hi everyone. Welcome back to another live with Singer Sewing Company. My name is Bethany and I'm an educator for Singer Sewing. And today it's the second Tuesday of the month. So I'm back for another, another hangout and a little sewing. So I'm going to give everybody a minute to jump on. We've got people jumping on from Facebook and YouTube today. So if you have any questions, don't hesitate to leave them in the chat. I will do my, ma by, bleh, my best <laughs> to keep an eye on the chat, make sure I'm answering your questions. But if I don't get to it, um, just know that one of us from my, myself or someone from my team will be responding to you um, after the live is over. Um, so today is another month. It's now October and I cannot believe it. Um, if you are tuning in, definitely let me know in the chat. Um, I'm going to ask you a different question this month. Normally I ask you guys like, where are you tuning in from and all of that. This time I want to know if you are dressing up for Halloween, what are you dressing up as? Um, if you're not dressing up, but maybe your child is or your grandchild uh, and you're going to be with them, let me know the costume ideas in the chat because that's what we're going to talk about today is how to create a costume for Halloween um, on a budget or upcycling something you already have. Now, if you haven't already noticed, I have the costume in the background on my singer dress form. This is my flamingo costume. And if you haven't checked out our project of the month, this is it. It is so much fun. And if you didn't know, I'm going to do my best to turn her with, I've got everything kind of pinned in here, but she's an apron. She is an apron. It goes around the waist and around the neck. It's kind of hard to tell from the front, but that's kind of the whole point. You don't really want it to look like an apron, but that's what she is. And she's a whole vibe. And that's what we're going to talk about today is how to take something and upcycle it. Um, if you didn't notice, I'm wearing my little stay spooky shirt today. That's pink. So I'm definitely on theme and it's got a little puppy dog ghost on it. And that is also a hint of what I'm going to show you guys today. So let me check and see if we have any comments of any, let me get, let me know what you guys are going to dress up as for Halloween. If you're not dressing up, that's okay. I know not everybody does. Maybe you're just wearing a fun shirt. Maybe you made a costume for your child or grandchild. I would love to know. So let me know. Um, but what I'm going to show you all to how to do today is not just the normal tips and tricks that I typically show you with our projects of the month, but I'm going to help you learn how to make something for your pet to match our project of the month. So you can go as a flamingo and then your pet can too. So I am going to, hey, Ashley. Um, <laughs> I love it when my friends jump on my lives. It makes me feel so good. Thanks, guys. Love the support um, from my fellow sewists. All right, so I'm going to show you all how to make this adorable pet bandana today. And if you can't tell, it definitely matches our flamingo costume because I'm obsessed with my dog and her name's Biscuit. And when we're done making one of these on the live today, I'll have her try it on and show you guys and model it because she's right down there on her a little bit. Um, but I love to match my dog. And so this is just a no brainer. And I thought, let's just complete a project this time. Normally I'm just showing you tips and tricks, but today we're going to, we're going to learn to make a little bandana real quick using some of the stuff from our project of the month. And one thing that's going to be important that I'm going to show you all is how to do the little face, the flamingo face, because it's the same process for this one. Okay. Oh, thanks guys. Now, before we jump in too far, I do want to let you guys know that we have a lot of people jumping into the chat. If you see anyone, drop a link in the chat that is not from Singer Sewing Company. Do not click on it. It is spam. I hate that I have to mention it, but it's just part of social media and doing live streams. Uh, it seems to be something that happens from time to time. So just keep yourself safe and don't click on any links that are not from Singer Sewing Company. Um, Diana said, I made a Minecraft costume for my child for book week and he is insisting on wearing it for Halloween. Well, isn't that convenient? You don't have to make another costume just for Halloween. Um, that's so awesome, but you want to make him something else. I just read the rest of your comment. <laughs> well then make him something else. Maybe once he sees what you've made him, then he might be convinced to, or maybe he can wear one to school if their school lets them. That's what I love about this apron costume is it doesn't, you don't have to turn it into a flamingo. You could turn it into anything, really. I mean, it's a blank slate. It's an apron. 
Uh, and you can get these in different colors or you can make your own apron. If you want to know how to make your own apron, I did a project in June for singer.com. So if you go to singer.com and go to um, inspirations and go to sewing projects and scroll back a few, that's not only where you'll find this tutorial, but also the tutorial for the apron that we did in June. It was a denim apron. And you could make that same, take that same project and tutorial and make an apron uh, for yourself in a canvas or a cotton or whatever, duck cloth, whatever kind of material you want to use um, to match whatever project, you know, costume you're trying to make. Um, this is just what I came up with. And they do, you can make like a kid size apron. So what I was going to say to Diana is if you have a child who's going to school and it's so hard sending them to school in a cot, like fully in costume, because they have recess, it gets filthy, they go to lunch, food spills on it, you know, it just ends up being a mess and it's ruined before they even get to trick or treat on Halloween. So this could be a good backup option because it is an apron. So it just ties around the waist and goes over the neck and they could take it off for recess. They could take it off for lunch. It's not an inconvenience to the teacher because they're not having to completely change their outfit midday three times. So this could be a really good option. I personally, before when I worked in an office and not from home, we used to dress up for Halloween a lot. And um, but I still had to conduct work and meetings, but I still wanted to participate and have fun. And this would be a great option to just put it on over my work clothes and have some fun, take it off for my meetings and then put it back on and nobody knows the difference. So this is another fun option, just a quick change. Um, so we're going to make a dog bandana to match our costume, the project of the month. This doesn't have to be just for your dog. This could be for your cat or your goat or your chicken or whatever you got at home. Um, <laughs> let's see here. I believe Ashley, your son, um, you made him an army man, like a camo, like uniform. Cause he wanted to be one of the little green army men for Halloween. I love that. Isn't it great that when you sew, you can like make your own patterns and make your own projects and you don't have to rely on what's in the store. Um, I love that. I love that about sewing. And I'm, if you saw me doing this, there are feathers everywhere in my studio today. So they're just like flying through the air. Uh, this is definitely kind of a messier project, but let's jump into making this uh, bandana. So I'm going to flip over to this camera and show you guys just how cute this turned out. Um, I made mine with snaps, so it snaps on my dog's neck. And I just measured her and I cut out a triangle to keep it really simple. Um, you can use uh, different patterns for bandanas if you want, but this is just what I went with to keep it really simple today. So I have one here, and what I'm using to add this ruffle to the edge is some ruffled ribbon. Isn't this the cutest stuff? It's what I used on the flamingo apron as well. And I love that it had the ruffle already built in and that it's nice and smooth. So we're going to use this today. And to get it to show a ruffle like this on the edge, I laid it between my two triangles. So I have two triangles here. Um, they are uh, a front and a back and I have them right sides together and I cut out my ribbon and I went ahead and placed it and sandwiched it between my fabric. And what I did is to get it to stay together, I kind of cheated the system a little bit. Don't hold it against me, but we're on a live and we have to move quickly. Um, I used some seam tape. This is double sided water soluble seam tape. So if you wash the bandana, it'll dissolve away and it won't matter because you've already sewn it. Um, but it's nice because it holds all of it together. You can see a little bit of it here at the end, but you won't see that when we're done. Um, but it helps me kind of hold and sandwich this ruffled ribbon between these two thinner pieces of fabric. And if you wanted to, you could pin, if you don't have seam tape, you could just pin this all along here to keep all your pieces together. Uh, and then you can also, y'all know I'm a big fan of the clips. You can clip across the top just like this to hold it in place as well. So what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna go to our sewing machine and I'm gonna sew from this corner all the way down to the center corner on the front. 
and then all the way back up. And then I'm going to sew all the way across here, but I'm going to stop and leave like a couple inches of a gap so I can turn this right side out when I'm done. All right. So let's jump over to the machine. We're just going to dive right in today. We're going to jump right in. All right. So I am, it's hard to see on your end, but I can feel the ruffle here and I'm going to sew just inside that ruffle. So I see the ruffle um, more on the outside when I turn it right side out. And if you um, want to know, I am sewing on the Singer heavy duty sewing machine today. Um, and this is the 6800C that I'm sewing on. Well, I moved my camera and now I can't get it back. There we go. Um, I'm sewing on the heavy duty 6800C. Um, you guys have seen me sew on this machine before. Do you need a heavy duty machine to do this project? No. Um, I personally, it's one of my favorites. It's definitely one of my favorites in the heavy duty line because I'm a big fan of computerized sewing machines. Um, but you do not need a heavy duty to make this project. But heavy duty really does come in handy when you are making costumes, depending on the materials and fabrics that you're using, especially if you get into some like serious cosplay, uh, you can definitely need um, benefit from having a heavy duty. All right, so I'm going to find my foot control on the floor. And I'm just gonna stitch around this really quickly. And I'm gonna drop my needle, leave my needle in the down position, lift my foot and pivot my fabric. That way I get a nice sharp corner. We keep going. There we go. I'm going to lift and pivot again. And now we're going to go down the side that doesn't have any of the ribbon. Taking my clips off as I go. All right. I left a little bit of a gap here. I'm going to trim my thread and we'll come back over here. So now I've got it all sewn all the way around, except for my little gap right here. And I'm gonna take my Singer um, fabric scissors and I'm gonna trim off this extra ribbon. I have to remember that I have to stay in y'all's view. It's so hard sometimes. I wanna like hold it close to me, but the camera is further away. So bear with me, yell at me if I get too far off camera. But I am just gonna remove this bulk here so I do not want that on the inside of my bandana. It's going to make it look clunky. There we go. I'm going to just trim that off. If you find a ribbon that just has a ruffle on one side, you wouldn't really have to do this, but this ribbon has the ruffle on both sides and we only needed one side of the ruffle. So we can trim all of this off. It doesn't have to be perfect because it's going to be on the inside. There we go. All right. So now what I'm going to do, let's scoot a little closer so you guys can see. I'm going to turn this right side out. And depending on what embellishment you're using, if it's a ribbon or those little puffy balls that are super cute that you can, that are trim or some fringe, you may need to leave an, a bigger gap to turn it. I probably should have myself, but that's okay. I typically will make the hole smaller than I really should. Um, and I usually misjudge that a little bit, but that's okay. Just have to work a little harder to get it turned right side out. Hello, hello. Diana, if you're having issues with your, the tension on your Singer machine, give customer service a call. Um, and they can probably walk you through some steps to get it corrected. Don't put your machine in the naughty corner. It's really not its fault, I promise. Um, but let's, yeah, give us a call and we'll get it, we'll get it figured out, okay? 
we all have those days where our machines and us don't always mesh well. I know I do. Um, so it's okay. All right, so now I'm gonna use a little tool like this. I call it the corner pusher tool. That is not the technical term for it, but do not ask me what it's technically called, but it just is used to run down your seams and to push out the corners so they're crisp and look nice. And this little pointed one down here is gonna be a little challenging. Um, it tends to round off this corner down here and that's okay. I don't mind that it's rounded off. Um, but that's kind of what it's going to look like here. I probably should have cut off a little more bulk in the corner, but that's okay. We will make it look cute one way or the other. And I'm going to run down this seam as well and get this corner. Let's see here. It's a bone folder. Okay, I've never heard it called that, Ashley, um, but that might be one of the terms to search um, for for that. Let's see. This ribbon is a little bulky right here. So we're just going to get it as good as we can and call it a day. All right, so we've got our ribbon on our bandana, and it's just a little bunched up here. I'm not in love with it right now, but I can fix it later. So we're going to move on and I'm going to show you how to close up this little hole right here. Um, what you're going to do is you're going to, now that you've turned it right side out, you're going to kind of trim some of this off and we're going to, this is how I do it. I like to fold this corner down in and then fold and fold. Okay. So we're folding the seam in. So it's nice and smooth all the way across there and you're gonna stitch all the way across, okay? Now, before I do that, I am gonna go over my iron, which I forgot to turn on. So it's gonna turn on and heat up for a second. And while it heats up, do you ever trim the point at the corner to make the point a little easier to turn? I do. Did I do that today? No, <laughs> but yes, Sonny, I, I do. Um, especially when you're adding like a trim like this, you definitely need to. Did not do that today before I turned it. That's okay. This is how we all learn, right? Uh, and we learn from each other. Because the one I did earlier did not do this because I trimmed it. Um, and so, you know, the joys of doing live sewing. The joys, the joys. I always will forget a step and get ahead of myself. All right, so I am going to press this. You definitely want to press this before we move on to attaching the flamingo face because it's going to be a lot easier to press it beforehand uh, than trying to press around the flamingo face. And my, I am using my Steamcraft Plus iron. I love this iron because it has this really nice point and it is very steamy. And you might, I don't know if you'll be able to hear it through the microphone or not, but... It uh, has a lot of steam coming out of it right now. So I'm going to give this a quick press and I'm going to turn this corner in and then I'll show you um, what that looks like so we can stitch across the top. And it's just a simple little top stitch across. So I'm going to fold. Let me show you guys. So I'm going to fold this corner in. And then I'm going to fold this in. And then I'm going to press this and then I'm going to flip it over and fold this in and press it again and we're going to top stitch. Okay, so let me press this little part real quick. I need a fourth camera over here at my ironing little station that I set up today. And then I'm going to flip it over. And we're going to press it and then I like to stitch all the way across the top. But if you just want to stitch right here, that's fine. This is the part that's going to go around your pet's neck and probably not even be super visible. Um, there, people are really only going to see the front. So it's totally personal preference there. So let me press this real quick and we'll go back to the sewing machine. All right, so I'm back at my sewing machine. And I am still on a straight stitch, a 2.5 millimeter straight stitch. And we're just going to sew from one end to the next. 
You can use white thread. You can use matching thread. It's totally up to you. I am starting in a little bit because I have a little bit of a bulk in that corner. Again, because I didn't trim my corner material, but that's okay. I'm sorry if my camera jiggles a little. It is fully extended out um, to reach the sewing machine. So it's a little wobbly when I use the sewing machine. I tried to hold it still while I was sewing and I don't know if that helped or not. Let's see here. All right, so I just trimmed my threads and I just did a little top stitch across. And I think that's super cute. So the next thing we're gonna do is make our flamingo face. Now. I went ahead and um, cut out my pieces. So you're gonna have four pieces. You're gonna have the main body piece of the head, which is the whole head here. Then you're gonna have um, a smaller piece that covers the beak from like the face all the way to the edge. And then you're gonna have a tiny beak piece. that's just the edge of the beak. And I like to do the little eyelashes. Now, all of these pieces um, come uh, included with the instructions for the monthly project with the apron so that you can um, size it down as big or as small as you want and cut out all of the pieces yourself. Um, so this is what I've already cut out. And I did go ahead and adhere them together with a little spray adhesive. Um, the reason I did this is one, I had cut this out earlier today. And by the time I was ready to sit down and start sewing with you guys, I realized that I was missing a couple, I was missing the eyelashes in this piece and I have no idea where they went in my studio and I couldn't find them. So I cut new ones and I didn't want to lose them again. So I went ahead and sprayed a little um, fabric adhesive to stick them all together. So they will come off up because it's just a temporary hold. Um, but this is nice to help hold the felt together so that we can stitch it together and we're going to sew it all together and then we'll put it on the bandana. Um, so this is my little cheat. The reason I didn't do it on the live is you really do need to do spray adhesive um, on in a very well ventilated area and my studio is quite small um, and so I didn't want to spray it indoors because it has a strong odor. So definitely only use spray adhesive if it's, if it's safe for you, you're in a well ventilated area and you don't have any allergies to it. Otherwise, just stick some pins in it and you could absolutely um, hold it all together that way, just like that, okay? So now we're gonna sew around these different pieces and I like to start with the black one. So we're gonna sew around this little piece right here and we're gonna sew across the eyelash so it doesn't come apart and fall off. And in order to do that, I'm going to come here for a second um, and check out my chat real quick while I swap out my thread. Ashley says I'm a sucker for anything flamingo. I love it. I know, Ashley, I love flamingos too. It's probably my favorite thing to look at when we go to the zoo. They're just so pretty. Um, and it's just a fun costume. I feel like this apron though, you guys could really be turned into any type of character for Halloween. So while I made mine a flamingo, I feel like there's a lot of really fun ideas that you all will come up with to make it your own. Um, so I'm excited to see what you create with this tutorial besides a flamingo. You may decide to do something different. Um, so if you have any ideas, definitely drop those down in the chat because I would love to know. And it might inspire someone else to make one with, that, with your idea. So let us know. Let's see here. All right, so we're threaded up for the black. I am going to continue on with the um, straight stitch at a 2.5 millimeter stitch length. And let's see here, my little bobbin thread came out. Oh, came out. Okay. All right, so it doesn't really matter where you start on this little nose piece. You can kind of start in any corner. I kind of like to start in one of these. It's up to you. And we're going to try to stitch as close to this edge as possible. Okay. We're, if this is 
just um, to attach it and it kind of gives it a fun little decoration to see it sewn on. Um, and so we're going to start here and just sew around this little black part. You definitely want to do a couple of back stitches as well. And take your time, go nice and slow. Leave your needle down when you pivot around the corners and other areas. And I am using all purpose thread. I'm not using anything decorative, but you absolutely could. And I think that would add a lot of fun um, and decoration to this project to use some decorative thread. There we go. And I'm going to pull this one out. And we've got it sewn on just like that. It's hard to see the black one, but you'll see these others in a second. So I'm going to trim my threads real quick. Keep my workspace tidy. All right. I do, I do like to change my thread for each color. I thought about not changing my thread just so you could see it better, but I don't think my OCD would allow me to do pink on black. All right, so the next one I'm gonna do is the pink and then we're gonna do this part. But I wanna talk about placement of the flamingo on the bandana. This is totally up to you. The one that I did earlier, where is it? Um, the one that I did earlier, the flamingo, I intentionally left it the same size as the one that's on the apron because I wanted um, it to be really big and prominent. And I love that it hangs off the edge. If this isn't your cup of tea to have it hanging off the edge, then you can shrink down the pattern and cut a smaller one to fit the bandana for your pet. Um, it's totally customizable to your liking. Um, so what we're going to do is now that we've got the black one on, I'm going to position my flamingo onto my little bandana here and let's see here I kind of like let's see if we're going to make this one kind of tilt down a little more do something a little different on this one than the one I originally did and I am going to pin it now in place to my bandana now the next part that we're going to do is we're going to stitch across the eyelash. Sorry, guys, the camera. We're going to stitch across the eyelash because I already have it threaded for black. And then we're going to change our thread to pink and we're going to stitch around this and around this. The reason I am not stitching around all of this first is because when we stitch around this, it's attaching it to the bandana and we're just going to do it all at the same time. Okay, so. To stitch across the eyelashes, this is totally up to you. I'm just gonna go across the curve. I'm not gonna bother with the little points down here, um, but I wanna make sure it's nice and secure. So for this one, I am gonna switch it to a zigzag stitch and I'm gonna lower my stitch a little bit because I wanna make sure that my zigzag stitch stays in the black. It doesn't go outside of the black onto the pink. And I'm just gonna do the same. We're just gonna follow the curve. And you definitely want to make sure you're back stitching at the beginning and end. There we go. I need to lift my foot and adjust a little more for the curve for the curve. There we go. So I've got this one on, I'm just trimming my thread. And then the next one, isn't that, this actually looks so cute from behind. Look at that perfect little zigzag stitch right across there. Um, so next we're going to swap out our threads and I would show you this up close, but you can't see the top. And when I put my hands down there to get you guys close enough, my hands are right in front of it so it's not cute so let's see do you guys have any ideas or suggestions for the um what you would make this apron into the little flamingo apron behind me have any of you made it yet for our project of the month i know it's still kind of early 
Are you guys last minute costume people? Or are you planning way ahead? I'm super curious. Let me know. This is the first year that my son has said, I don't think I'm going to trick or treat mom. Granted, he's 16 now. Um, so I get it. But he, he likes handing out the candy and stuff. So he used to just hand out the candy and um, and he would still dress up. But this year, he wasn't so sure about going full costume. So he got a Harry Potter themed t-shirt, the glasses and the tie. And I think he's just going to wear that. And that's fine with me. <laughs> it makes it a little easier for me this year. Let's see. All right, so that's what our costumes were in the 90s, an apron um, with a sharp plastic mask that cut in your face. That's funny. I actually have some, some masks that we made um, for another class uh, in the background. All right, so now I'm going to sew around the beak here. So let's go to the sewing machine. I've got it threaded, and we're just going to follow the same process as before. And I do need to make sure I switch my machine back to a straight stitch and it automatically uh, defaults to 2.5 millimeter stitch length, which is perfect. And we're gonna stitch around the beak here. Leave my needle down and pivot. I'm going to take out my pen. It's kind of causing a little pucker here. And there we go. One of the reasons I like sewing on the computerized machines is the needle up down button. <laughs> and the heavy duty 6800C does have the needle up down button, which is really nice. Nice feature. There we go. All right, let's trim some threads. I have a whole feather boa over here on top of my little switcher box that, sw box that switches between my camera. So I keep hitting the wrong button. All right. There we go. So now we have the beak part sewn on. Now we just need to attach the rest of the head. And I'm gonna smooth it out and reposition my pen because it had a little bit of a pucker. There we go. All right, so now I'm gonna sew around the rest of this and I'm gonna stick with the same thread because this is kind of a peachy color and I don't have a peachy color thread. So this will work. All right, so same process. We're just gonna stitch around. And when I get to this point right here where the edge of the fabric is, I'll show you what I'm gonna do there. Um, and we'll finish that off really nicely. And... We're pivoting. All right, so I'm going to stop when I get to this um, edge right here, the edge of the fabric where the fabric meets the ruffle. I'm going to stop there and pivot my needle and I'm going to sew straight across along this fabric edge. And then I'm going to go back up because I'm going to trim off this excess that's hanging over the, the little ribbon here. There we go. And last little bit. There we go. A couple stitch back stitches to secure it. And now 
we have our whole face attached and I can take out my pen and I am just trimming my threads real quick. So it looks nice for you guys. All right. So there's our little face stitched on and now I'm going to trim this little bit. So we'll come back over here and I'm just going to trim with my fabric scissors straight across, making sure that I don't cut my bandana and I don't cut my ribbon. And that looks so nice. Super cute. I love it. Now you could stop here, but if you wanted to um, add some feathers, you absolutely could. I plucked these <laughs> off of my feather boa. So you can just grab a few and kind of hide this neck here so it doesn't look so awkward. Um, you can place a few here going this way and zigzag stitch it in place. So let's do that real quick. Let's just, why not? While we're here, we've got a few more minutes together. So let's do it. This is where that extra high lift right here, you see that in the foot makes it so much easier to get all of this up underneath here. And I'm going to set my machine back to a zigzag stitch. And I'm just doing a back and forth tacking motion to tack these down. And trim my threads. There you go. We've got a few going that way. Let's grab a few more. And we'll do a few more going the other way. And it kind of hides that like raw edge neckline of the flamingo and adds a little flare. So let's just kind of hold this. So it's just going to go like this. They're supposed to go all sorts of ways. Like I said, there's feathers all over my studio today and I'm not upset about it. <laughs> I love it. It's so girly today. So, so girly. There we go. So I've tacked them all down. I'm going to trim threads real quick. Oop. I poke myself with my sharp scissors. Don't do that, guys. All right. Look at how stinking cute that is. I love it. I love it so much. And in just a second, I'm going to make this get put it on. But first, um, you can cut your bandana so it ties around the neck. You could do an over the collar bandana if that's more your jam. I am a big fan of snaps. So I'm just gonna plug in a couple of snaps here to secure the bandana onto my puppy. And then I'll let you guys meet Biscuit. She's never been on a live before, so this is exciting. She's passed out asleep in her bed. So we'll see if she wakes up for y'all. She's she's uh, in the middle of her afternoon afternoon nap but she lets she fun fact she is always in here in my studio when i'm doing my lives and you guys never even know because she's so quiet and such a good girl all right so i've got my snaps on hey biscuit biscuit come here come here come come here let me move this come here biscuit see if she'll come over here and model this little bandana for you guys biscuit come now come on She's moving slow because she's tired. Come here. Come here. Come on. Come on. Here she comes. Oh, you look like you just woke up from a nap. Say hi, everybody. Say hi. All right, let's put your bandana on. Let's put your bandana on. Oh, you look so pretty, Biscuit. Ready? You want to show everybody? Look at your feathers and flamingo. Hi, say hi, everybody. All right, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this little tutorial. Super fun. Now you and your pet can match with our project of the month. Here, you can go wear this back to your nap. I did want to show you all one other thing real quick. And that is this project. Now, I did not sew this one with you guys in the live because it is a very uh, more in-depth project, but this is one that I did for singer.com. And so if you go to singer.com to our inspirations tab under sewing projects, not only will you find our flamingo project of the month, but you will find this one as well. And this is a rope basket. This is made entirely out of rope, uh, including the lid and the, the top and everything. 
and I cut little felt pieces um, to stick onto the front so you can change it out or take it off. Um, but it's a big rope basket. So this is perfect for your Halloween candy. Um, so if you want to learn how to make this, the full tutorial of this project is also available on singer.com and might be besides this one and this one, they're just all my favorite projects I've done. I just love this time of year. Um, but anyways, hope you guys will take some time to maybe go make one of these. You'll get so many compliments on it. I promise. It's so cute. All right, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in to our live for the month. And I hope you take some time to do our project of the month. If you do, please tag us and use the hashtag singer sewing so that we can see your finished projects. I cannot wait to see how you make this apron costume your own. And if you make one um, for your pet in a bandana, I definitely need to be tagged in that as well. Again, I was sewing on a Singer Heavy Duty 6800 seat sewing machine today. And it is currently $140 off right now in the US for singer.com. Um, so go check that out and take full advantage of that sale. And until next month, I hope you guys have a wonderful October and enjoy all the trick-or-treating. Bye guys.